Israel, a nation constantly under the threat of skies darkened by incoming rockets. It's recognized as one of the world's most heavily fortified nations and has risen to this challenge. But how does one ensure the safety of its citizens under such relentless pressure? Through a military that boasts an advanced air defense system, including the Iron Dome, Arrow 2, Arrow 3, and David's Sling, each component meticulously engineered to neutralize a wide array of threats, from missiles and mortars to UAVs, safeguarding the nation's populace. Among these, the Iron Dome is particularly notable as a critical asset for intercepting short-range threats. Since its operational debut in 2011, it has significantly alleviated the concerns of Israeli citizens by successfully intercepting tens of thousands of threats. This system, which includes a network of interceptor missiles, advanced radar sites, and a sophisticated algorithm to determine threat engagement, is central to Israel's defense strategy. However, it also presents notable challenges, particularly in terms of cost-effectiveness. Each interceptor missile, costing between $50,000 and $100,000, is used to counter far less expensive rockets priced around $1,000 each, posing a dilemma for economic sustainability. Moreover, the vulnerabilities of the system were starkly highlighted during recent attacks, including a significant incident on October 7, 2023. On that day, Hamas launched thousands of rockets and missiles at Israel within just a few hours. Despite the advanced technology of the Iron Dome, this intense barrage pushed the system to its limits. The overwhelming number of threats exceeded its capacity, resulting in some rockets penetrating Israel's defenses. Is there another way to address these escalating threats? Indeed, there is. The Iron Beam. Are you curious about what it is? The Iron Beam is a revolutionary laser-based defense system designed to enhance existing defenses and add another layer of protection. Essentially, the Iron Beam is a directed energy weapon, or in simpler terms, a laser gun. Sounds like something from a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? Just a quick moment before we unveil the rest. If you're not already part of our incredible community, consider subscribing to this channel. Stay up to date and never miss out on the latest insights. And now, let's go on. For years, defense contractors and research labs, in collaboration with military branches, have been dedicated to the development of such a weapon. The roots of this technology trace back to advancements in fiber optic telecommunications in the 90s, which showed that fiber optic lasers could efficiently convert electrical power into intense optical power. However, scaling these lasers to weapons-grade power proved uneconomical for years, until a breakthrough at Lockheed Martin. They developed a method to combine multiple kilowatt fiber lasers into a single high-quality beam through a process known as spectral beam combination. This crucial advancement means that laser weapons can now achieve the necessary power without significantly increasing the size of the equipment, making them versatile enough to be deployed on various military platforms such as Navy ships, Air Force fighter jets, and Army vehicles. These weapons integrate seamlessly with existing combat systems, enhancing operational efficiency, lethality, and providing a broader range of tactical options for military forces. Over the years, Israel has continued to evolve its defense technology, culminating in the Iron Beam. At the Abu Dhabi International Defense Exhibition in March 2023, Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, the developer behind this cutting-edge technology, showcased a full-scale model of the Iron Beam for the first time. Ran Ghazali, the executive vice president of Rafael's Land and Naval Division, highlighted the system's precision, stating, we can adjust the laser beam to the diameter of a coin within a range of 10 kilometers. Rafael's real fire tests have proven the Iron Beam's effectiveness in intercepting UAVs, mortars, rockets, and anti-tank missiles under various conditions. Following these successful trials, the Israeli Defense Research and Development Directorate decided to fund the project, recognizing its potential. Ghazali has suggested that the Iron Beam could start operating alongside the Iron Dome by around 2025. However, the immediacy of recent conflicts might accelerate the deployment of this crucial technology. This prompts a vital question for our times. Could Israel fast-track the deployment of the Iron Beam amidst ongoing hostilities? Share your thoughts in the comments. Now let's explore how the Iron Beam works. The Iron Beam system operates based on advanced laser physics paired with high-precision electronic components. At the heart of the system lies the laser cannon, which uses solid-state diode laser technology. 
This type of laser is known for its energy efficiency and durability, making it more advantageous than traditional gas-based lasers. The laser cannon is mounted on a gimbal, allowing 360-degree rotation to cover all horizontal angles and nearly vertical ones up to 90 degrees. This setup is crucial for comprehensive surveillance and engagement capabilities. Accompanying the laser cannon is a cutting-edge detection system that includes a phased array tracking radar, capable of scanning vast expanses of sky and identifying targets several hundred kilometers away. High-resolution infrared sensors and optical cameras complement the radar, enhancing the accuracy of target detection and tracking. The data gathered by these sensors are processed in real time by a digital signal processing, or DSP, unit equipped with advanced microprocessors. This system analyzes the incoming data to determine the most effective response to neutralize threats. When activated, the laser beam, powered to 100 kilowatts, is directed at the target. The system is supported by high-capacity battery banks and sophisticated energy converters, ensuring the laser can sustain continuous operation as needed. The beam focuses on critical points of the target, such as the rocket's engine, generating intense heat that causes the target to disintegrate or explode in mid-air. The effectiveness of the iron beam hinges not just on the power of its laser, but crucially on the accuracy of its targeting systems. The precision with which it can maintain lock on a moving target and track it accurately is vital for the system's success. Do you wonder if the iron beam could bring substantial benefits? It indeed appears promising from several perspectives. First, cost efficiency. As said earlier, each interceptor missile used by the Iron Dome system can cost up to $100,000. In contrast, the rockets they're designed to intercept, such as those launched by Hamas, can be manufactured for just a few thousand dollars. This creates a substantial financial imbalance, as Israel spends vastly more to intercept these rockets than it costs Hamas to produce them. Maintaining such a system is not only expensive, but also raises concerns about long-term fiscal sustainability, especially given the hundreds of millions potentially spent during intense conflict periods. Furthermore, the production of these missiles involves complex manufacturing processes and timelines. While exact production rates are confidential, similar systems in the U.S. indicate that it can take months or even years to deliver these missiles. In scenarios of extensive attacks, such as those Israel experienced in October, waiting months for ammunition replenishment is impractical. The Iron Beam presents a cost-effective alternative. This system utilizes electricity to power its laser drastically reducing the cost per interception. The estimates for the operational costs of the iron beam vary significantly according to different sources. Former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has stated that the iron beam could intercept a rocket using around $3.5 worth of electricity. Other estimates range widely, from as little as $1 to approximately $2,000 taking into account all operational factors. However, these broader cost figures remain unverified. Meanwhile, Rafael Advanced Defense Systems claim that the system operates at close to zero cost. This figure does not account for the initial production, installation, and transportation of the system, but the negligible cost per use suggests it could be a more economical alternative compared to traditional missile interceptors like the Iron Dome. Second, unlimited magazine. One significant advantage of the Iron Beam is its unlimited magazine, thanks to its use of electricity. Traditional ground-based air defense systems like the Iron Dome are limited by the number of interceptor missiles they can hold. In the event of a massive barrage of rockets, mortars, and drones, these systems may have to prioritize which threats to intercept, potentially allowing less dangerous ones to pass through. In contrast, the Iron Beam does not face these limitations. Its energy-based approach allows it to continuously engage incoming threats as long as there is power effectively giving it an unlimited capacity to deal with attacks, no matter the volume or frequency. Furthermore, the operational dynamics of the Iron Beam eliminate the need for Israeli troops to reload under potentially dangerous conditions, enhancing both safety and efficiency. Traditional interceptors not only require reloading, but also create additional hazards. When they destroy incoming threats, debris and shrapnel can scatter, posing risks to civilian areas below. By utilizing a laser, a non-kinetic weapon, to neutralize threats, the Iron Beam minimizes these risks. It directly targets and disables incoming ordnance without causing secondary damage from debris, 
significantly reducing the potential for collateral damage to civilian life and property. Third, intelligence. The iron beam exemplifies the next step in intelligent weaponry, largely operating autonomously without human intervention. This level of automation is crucial, as human operators cannot match the speed and reaction time needed to counter threats moving at or beyond the speed of sound. The iron beam autonomously detects, tracks, and neutralizes threats, making it an integral component of Israel's defense strategy. This system's self-sufficient nature is why Israel envisions deploying iron beam units along its borders. Additionally, the iron beam is designed for rapid deployment and easy operation, enabling allied militaries to be trained quickly and integrate the system into their own defenses almost immediately. This capability facilitates instant operational readiness, further extending the strategic advantages of the iron beam wherever it is deployed. Four, proximity defense and stealth operations. The iron beam offers the unique advantage of engaging threats at closer ranges. This capability is particularly vital in urban or densely populated areas where quick response times are crucial. By neutralizing threats before they can reach their targets, the iron beam provides an essential layer of protection where traditional missile systems might not be as effective. Additionally, unlike traditional missile systems that can be both seen and heard, the iron beam operates silently and without visible emissions. This stealth capability makes it significantly harder for adversaries to locate and target the system, preserving the element of surprise and enhancing the safety of the defense installation. This silent operation is not only a tactical asset, but also minimizes disturbance to civilian populations nearby. But don't be fooled. Is all that glitters truly gold? As usual, no. While the iron beam offers numerous advantages, it's important to recognize that even the most sophisticated technologies come with their own set of challenges and limitations. And these need to be carefully considered to fully understand the system's operational envelope and potential impact. First, short range. The operational range of the iron beam is approximately 20 kilometers, which is notably less than the 70 kilometers covered by the Iron Dome and far shorter than the 160 kilometers range of the American Patriot system. This limited range means iron beam units must be positioned relatively close to the urban areas they protect. Placing these batteries closer to populated areas could increase the risk to civilians, especially if the system fails to intercept a threat. Second, sensitivity to weather conditions. The system's effectiveness can be significantly compromised in adverse weather. Heavy rain, dense cloud cover, fog, and sandstorms can all diminish the laser's energy as these conditions scatter and absorb the laser light, reducing its intensity and effectiveness. Consequently, the effective range of the system can decrease under such circumstances. While the Israeli government has made efforts to address the range limitations of the iron beam, challenges related to bad weather persist. These meteorological conditions continue to impact the system's operational effectiveness, acknowledging that in inclement weather, the iron beam may not perform optimally. Third, energy requirements and infrastructure. While the iron beam boasts low operational costs per shot, it's important to consider the substantial infrastructure and energy requirements needed to support such a system. The iron beam requires a continuous substantial power supply to maintain readiness and efficacy. This dependency means that the infrastructure for power generation and distribution must be robust and reliable. Additionally, the facilities housing the iron beam need to be equipped with advanced energy management systems to ensure efficient power use and to handle the high demands of a high energy laser system. This includes not only the energy to power the laser itself, but also the supporting systems for cooling, control, and communications, which are vital for the system's operation. The need for such extensive infrastructure can increase the overall cost and complexity of deploying and maintaining the iron beam, affecting where and how it can be effectively implemented. Fourth, handling submunitions. Another potential limitation of the iron beam concerns its ability to deal with submunitions from weapons like cluster bombs, which release multiple smaller bomblets. There are valid concerns about whether the system can effectively track and destroy all such submunitions. Each bomblet represents a separate threat that must be individually targeted and neutralized, demanding extremely fast targeting capabilities and high rates of fire from the laser system. This scenario poses significant challenges in terms of the system's energy requirements, timing precision, 
and overall effectiveness in simultaneous threat engagement. While the Iron Beam represents a significant technological advancement, it is not intended to replace the Iron Dome or Patriot systems completely. Instead, it will act as an essential complement, enhancing existing defenses and significantly reducing operational costs. The landscape of air defense is evolving rapidly. In light of recent attacks, Israel is reportedly accelerating this project to make it operational as soon as possible. This urgency is supported by substantial international backing, including from the United States. On April 23rd of this year, the U.S. approved a $95.3 billion foreign aid package aimed at Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Specifically for Israel, the package includes roughly $15 billion in military aid as the nation continues its operations against Hamas in Gaza and addresses threats from Iran. This aid prioritizes defensive capabilities, allocating more than $5 billion to replenish systems like the Iron Dome, David's Sling, and the Iron Beam. So, will we see this advanced weapon deployed soon? Only time will tell.